Well, I hear God singing to me. Every nation must be saved. Well, I hear God singing to me. Every challenge must be brave. Oh, I feel God's spirit in me. Quench it not too much as they. Well, I hear God singing to me. Hear God sing for Jesus sake. I hear God sing for Jesus sake. Well, I hear. I hear God singing to me. Do you hear? I hear God singing to me. Cause I hear. I hear God singing to me. Do you hear? I hear God singing to me. I hear God singing and rejoicing, and I love my Father's song. I hear God singing and He's saying, everyone should sing along. Righteous singing scares the devil, so let's shout our anthems loud. Soldiers choir in holy concert, voices lifted, faces bowed. Well, I hear, I hear God singing to me. Do you hear? Cause I hear, I hear God singing to me. Do you hear? I hear God singing to me. Gather Every us lesson. and start a movement. Scatter Every us, we scatter seeds. seeds. Planting Christ in every nation as our great crusade succeeds. Criticize us, we grow stronger. Kill us and for sure we win. For our battle lives in earthly, and our souls will never end. Well, I hear, I hear God singing to me. Do you hear? I hear God singing to me. Cause I hear. I hear God singing to me. Cause you hear. I hear God singing to me. Sukiya, Sukiya, Mungu waki yamba. Come on, brothers. Sukiya, Mungu waki yamba. So he a mungu waki emba. He got sent for Jesus' sake. So he a mungu waki emba. He got sent for Jesus' sake. Cause I hear. Do you hear? Do you hear? Cause I hear. I hear God singing to me. Just my sisters. Do you hear? I hear God singing to me. I hear. I hear God singing to me. Do you hear? I hear God singing to me. Cause I hear. I hear God singing to me. Come on, brothers. Do you hear? I hear God singing to me. Do you hear? I hear God singing to me. It's a beautiful sound. Yes, I hear. I hear God singing to me. I hear God singing to me. Amen. Family, you can be seated. Before we uh, go into our uh, communion song, where's Mona? Come here, Mona. Come here, Mona. I've been inspired. Mona, Mona went to practice morning. You know Mona can play the drums? She just got to find the beat. So, turn my drums on. Mona. Yeah, it's okay. Let's get in the beat. And Mona, you think you can find a beat on, what song y'all was singing? She was, fi come fill my cup. Y'all, let's encourage Mona on her debut. I told her I was gonna wait another time, but the spirit hit me and said, what are we waiting for? And why are we waiting? When Mona's already here. Amen. So, let me give the mic back to you guys, and then after that, we'll go into our communion song. But I wanna give Mona a chance to, since they practiced this morning, the beat. Amen. Now this is the kingdom of God. Yeah. 
Pray. The song that we're going to be singing, family, is Come Fill My Cup. It's number 15 in your blue song binders. Come fill my cup. Come fill my cup. Let it overflow. Come fill my cup. Come fill my cup. Let it overflow. Come fill my cup. Come fill my cup. Let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Let's hear the rain. I was with love. Lost and So, so fill my cup, so fill my cup, Lord, so fill my cup, let it overflow with love. The Lord is promised, He was my hope, He was my shield, He was my So I can help my brothers and sisters fill my cup. Let it overflow. Let it overflow. So, so fill my cup. So fill my cup. Let it overflow. So fill my cup. Let it overflow. So fill my cup. So fill my cup. Let it overflow. Give our sister one more round of applause. <laughs> Woo! Amen. In the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Mona. Uh, I just wanted to be encouraged. I, it really got me when I went to Winston. He goes, I ain't know she can play either. <laughs> I said, oh, you playing now? <laughs> and then Winston tell her, oh, I'm going to buy you a drum set. I'm going to hold you to it, Winston. <laughs> <laughs> let's give our hearts to God and let's go into our communion song and continue to worship God and give him praise amen amen, amen. 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 amen family <laughs> the song that we will be singing before communion is I give myself away here I am to worship it's number two in your blue song binders if you need it why are you turning there now, one of the biggest charges that we have as disciples is to give our wealth, ourself away as a yes. living sacrifice. Yes. So as we focus on that, let's serve God. Amen. I give myself away. I give myself away so you, so you can use can me. You I give myself away. I give myself away. So you, so you can use can me. Use I give, me. I give myself away. I give myself away. So you, so you. Can use me here I am here I stand here I stand Lord my life is in your hand Lord I'm longing Lord I'm longing to see your desire Away. I give myself away, Jesus. I give, I give myself away, so you, so you can, can 
can use me. I give myself away. Hallelujah, God. I give myself away so you can use me. Take my life. Take my life. Take my life. As a sacrifice. Be the sacred. All my dreams. In all my plans. Lord, I place them in your hands. Them in your hands. I give myself away. I give myself away, Lord. I give myself away so you can use me. I give. I give myself away. My life is not my own. I give myself away so you can use me. My life is not my own to you. I give I give myself. I give myself to you. My life, my life is not. My life is not my own. I belong to you. To you, I belong. I give myself away. I give myself. I give myself to you. My life is not. My life is not my own. I give myself to you. To you, I belong. For anything you want, I God, myself, I, I give myself, myself to you. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow. Down. To bow. Down. To say that you're my Here God. To say that you're my God. You're lovely. You're together, Lord. And you're worthy. All together. All together wonderful to me, and I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. I'll never know how much it cost. To see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. And you're together all together worthy all together wonder for to me thank you singers and thank you john for leading that song song <clears throat> we, amen we've reached a point in our service where we are going to have our communion message. My name is Jamie Watkins. I am going to be leading this uh, portion of service. Uh, thank you to the church and the church's leadership for allowing me this opportunity. When I think about uh, the communion and uh, us being reminded of what Jesus did for each of us individually, I can't help but think about the first time I was really introduced into studying God's word. And people love me enough to take the time to open up God's word with me to help me understand what my purpose should be in life. And it helped me understand that the excuses that I might have made were being erased. You can't feel your way to heaven. You can't think and, 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 and um, it was just very black and white for what God wanted for my life. And I realized over the course of the studies that I started to transform my thinking about what my life should be like. And it helped me also transform my actions because my actions started in my, in my mind first. And 
when I became a disciple, I realized that my life is so much more effective because my will for my life is being aligned with God's will. And God became my, vocal, my focal point. And living in your purpose helps you understand the mission. It helps you understand really what life's meaning is all about for every one of us individually. Turn with me to Hebrews 10, and I'm going to read verses 9 through 14. Hebrews 10, verses 9 through 14. And hopefully we can be reminded of why communion is so important for all of us. Amen. Hebrews 10, verse 9 reads, Then he said, Here I am. I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second. And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one sacrifice, he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. When I read that scripture, and I had read it before, it meant something different to me the last time I read it. Because I saw Jesus' sacrifice, God actually allowing his son to be murdered for me as an opportunity to, for me to become holy. I internalize it and realize there's no way for me to be seen holy in God's eyes unless Jesus has sacrificed his life for me. So it just made me have more gratitude, more thank, thankfulness for what commune is all about. It's remembering that no matter how hard we try, we could never be what we want to be for God unless it was Jesus' sacrifice. We should think about that and hold that in our hearts, not just when we have communion, but when just, we just live through our weeks. When we're living the life that God asks us to live, we know that because of Jesus' sacrifice, we are being made holy. Ushers, you can come up. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to take communion. Thank you for loving us enough to be able to have knowledge of what you have in store for our lives for the amazing sacrifice of Jesus in order for us to be alive spiritually, for our eyes to be open. Father, I pray we never take that for granted, that we can always hold that sacrifice of his life in the most high esteem. Please. Thank you, Father, for loving us. Thank you, Father, for being gracious. I pray that we can always be grateful for your son's death, which allowed us to have opportunity to be holy. We pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. My name is Winston Lewis. I'm one of the brothers that serve here at the River City Christian Ministry, and today I have the, I have the title, uh, <laughs> I have the pleasure of doing the title message. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, ushers, let's move forward. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for how you provide for us in our lives and how you have met our needs. We are truly grateful. You take care of us in every need. Father God, you said bring the whole tithe and see if you not throw up in the floodgates of heaven. The purpose of the tithe is to teach us to always put God first in our lives. I pray that when we give to you, we give cheerfully. We give with all our heart and not reluctantly, for God loves a cheerful giver. I pray that wherever we give, we give knowing it's to thank you and to honor you. Thank you for loving and giving to us. I pray that I pray that we can give back a small portion to how much you have already given to us. Amen. God, we love you. We thank you for all that you do. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, family. So the song that we're going to be singing before Tim brings forth the message. Amen. <laughs> the title of that song is Joy. It is in your blue song binders, and it is number 25. Let's give God all we got and encourage him. Amen. Amen. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love. I've got true love. Instead of pain, there's freedom. 
There's freedom though you captured me. I've got joy. I've got joy instead of mourning. There's beauty. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love. I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom. There's freedom though you captured me. I've got joy instead of mourning. You give, you give me joy deep down, deep in my soul, deep down, deep in my soul, deep down, deep in my soul. You give, give me joy down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, Lord, down deep in my soul. There's beauty, there's beauty in my brokenness. I've got you, love. I got you, love. Instead of pain, there's freedom. There's freedom, though you've captured me. I've got joy instead of mourning. There's beauty. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom though you've captured me. I've got joy instead of mourning. You gave me joy deep down, deep down, deep down, deep in my soul. You gave me joy down deep in my soul. Even when I'm feeling sorrow, down deep in my soul, never. I never been so free, caught in your love for me. Never been more secure, knowing your, knowing your heart. Never been so free, caught in your love for me. Never been more secure, knowing your, you give me joy. Down deep in my soul, come on, family. Down deep in my soul. You give me joy down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. Never, I never been so free, caught in your love for me. Never been more secure, knowing your, knowing your heart, Lord. Never been so free, caught in your love for me. Never been more secure, knowing your. You give me joy, Lord, Down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. You give, you give me joy, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul, down deep in my soul. Amen. Amen. God is good, and all the time. Family, it's time. Let's go. I say, family, it's time Let's go. to get in the Word of God. Yeah. Come on now. I'm just so encouraged and so thankful for the brothers. I, I'm looking forward to my evaluation in the morning at 9 o'clock. Yeah. yeah, I look forward to get that behind me and moving on. Come on now. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I'm really excited about Tim stepping in today. Yeah. And uh, brother, I love you. Yeah. I appreciate you. Your heart, uh, you love to serve, you love to give. Tim is a school teacher. And, uh, you know, we got a special place in our heart for school teachers. You know, but, uh, brother, I'm really excited by sitting down and hear you bring the word today. And uh, I just thank God for you Amen. in every way. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. So let's pray. And the next voice you hear would be Tim bringing the word of God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, family. God, thank you for this opportunity to worship you this morning. Yes. That we don't take for granted for all your encouragement we heard in Sunday school, uh, from the singing and to now Tim bringing the message. Father, we don't take for granted the opportunity to worship freely to you, God. Amen. And Father, thank you uh, for always having the door for us to walk through to glorify your name. Yes. I pray, God, we will choose that door every single day of our lives. And never let Satan get us off track. Never, never. Father, I pray that we'll love you without our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Yes. And lean on your understanding, not our own. 
I pray that this morning Tim will bring the message to help our hearts clean of what's good and hate what's evil. Yes. That we'll lean on your understanding and not our own. Amen. Thank you, Father. Give Tim the spirit to uh, uh, teach, to encourage, to build us up and draw us near to you. And we give you all glory and praise and honor. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. As you know, my name is Tim Young. I serve here as one of the deacons at uh, the River City Christian Ministries, and I'm excited this morning. Amen. I'm excited this morning to, uh, to be able to be a vessel that God can use uh, to, to preach his word. Amen. Amen. I want to thank, uh, thank God for this opportunity, um, for trust, trusting in me as well as the leadership, Mark and Vanita, Roy and Rochelle. Um, I'm grateful. Uh, just to be a part of the kingdom, amen? No matter, no matter what I'm serving, how I'm serving, it doesn't matter. I can be serving washing the toilets, and that's fine with me. Um, just serving God is, is what it's all about, amen? Um, I also want to welcome those that are watching online. Welcome this morning. Uh, I'm excited to be able to uh, bring the word. Uh, also want to welcome the Chapala Church of Christ. All right, Chapala, we love you. Amen. So uh, before I do get started, I also want to say, and I want to echo what Mark said, I really appreciate hearing the teaching and, and that the brothers come and, and do. I, I love hearing Mark, and I love hearing, I love hearing everybody, because God uses different vessels to bring us what we need to hear. And I've heard some things I definitely needed to hear over the few uh, past weeks. Um, I heard, stop and look for God in the midst of your storm by Sawa Thomas. Amen. I heard Be Still and Obey by Jamie Watkins. I heard Just Enough Light for the Step You're On by Brian Vereen. I heard Gotta Be Ready When He Calls My Name by Sawa Thomas. And I just heard God's Blueprint and Your Choice by Ken Charlie. Amen? Amen. So without any further delay, <laughs> uh, today I, I wanted to hear that song and I want that song um, to sing that song before because this song helps kind of set the stage for um, what it is I'll be talking about. So the title is uh, Free of Me, Captivated by God. Free of Me, Captivated by God. So as I start this morning, I just want to be able to read those words a little bit of what we just sung, um, and then we'll go in into the message. Amen? There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. When we were singing this song, I was starting to choke up and to uh, cry a little bit because, you know, when you listen to that song and, and you live it, it, uh, it, it makes, it, it touches your heart. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom, though you've captured me. I've got joy instead of mourning. You give me joy down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. Down deep in my soul. I've never been so free, caught in your love for me. I've never been so more secure knowing your heart, Lord. You give me joy down deep in my soul. That's a powerful song with powerful words that expresses the understanding of what it's like to be captivated and filled with the joy of God. To be set free from self and to be caught up in God. And I can, as I said, I can really relate to this song because every day I'm battling the battle of self-focus. Every day I'm striving to focus on God. And, and aren't we all? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Free of me, captivated by God. Free of me. What does it mean to be free of me? Most people aren't even aware that they're held captive by themselves. That their primary focus Majority of their life is all about them. As Christians, we know and may say it's not about me. But how do we live? Do we live as though everything is about me or do we live as though everything is about God? Just because we say it is it's all about God doesn't automatically make everything you do about God. You can say it, but it's important that we strive to live it. We have to intentionally make it about God. We have to choose every day to make every day about God. 
Deep down, we all know that we need to focus less on ourselves and more on God. That we need to stop trying to people please. Stop trying to measure up. Stop focusing on our flaws. Stop dwelling on rejection. Stop, talk, stop talking, um, I'm sorry, stop taking everything as a personal attack on you. Stop caring so much about what people think about you because it's not about you. Amen. Amen. Shifting our focus from ourselves and on to God is much harder than it sounds. Yeah. All of us struggle with the pull of self-focus, whether we recognize it or not. How many of us have heard of the phrase, do you? Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm sure we've all heard that phrase. That's a phrase that's pretty popular for a while now. And one of my friends um, I used to play basketball with, he would always say, do you, do you? And uh, you know, when you think about that phrase, I think that the intentions of do you is not bad in itself because when, you, when people are saying it, usually um, you say it just telling that person, hey, don't worry about everything else. Just do what you're normal to, do you. you know, and, and so in, in my reference of playing basketball, you, know, you just have to do what you know to do, play, play the game. Okay? So, but <laughs> when you say do you, you're putting a focus on you. I'm going to do me. That means the focus is on me. So it ha I think, like I said, it has good intentions, but with the way the world is, that's, that's not, we're going to easily internalize that if we say do you or do I do me as something that is personal or to yourself. Amen? Amen. Amen. It means it's all about you. Out, Romans 12, 18, this says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Amen. This is a better saying. This is from God. This is saying that the responsibility is on me right. as far as it belongs to me. As far as it's up to me, I have to do what I need to do. But the attention and the focus is on everyone else. I'm focused on keeping the peace. I'm focused on loving others. I'm focusing on outwardly instead of inwardly. Amen? Amen. Amen. You have to make it about you or you can easily or it can easily become. I'm sorry. You have to make it about God or it can easily become about you. So whether you're a Christian or not, do you is a mantra of this time. It's a phrase, the focus. Uh, we live in a self-focused, self-absorbed, entire and entitled world. The world values convenience, comfortability and self-service. It's easy to see that most people care more about their own interests than the interests of others. It's easy to see when we go out that, that many people are downright rude to other people um, and show little or no consideration about other people. They just want to go about their day. I know you can see that because I see it every day. We all see it. But the, the, the key is that can't be us. That's right. We can't, we can't succumb to the way the world behaves. Amen. Self-focus is subtle. It's not always obvious or easy to detect. It's gradual and quiet. It creeps in on the back of good intentions. Wow. Self-focus hurts our relationships, shrinks our faith, kills our confidence, and ultimately steals our joy. Oh, wow. Amen. God gives us joy when we are captivated by God. Yes. And Satan steals our joy when we end up being captivated by self. Yeah. Wow. Amen. The only way we're ever going to become free of self-focus is to become captivated by God. Amen. 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 And that was enough self-talk. Now we're going to be focused on God because that's what it's all about. Amen. Amen. Captivated by God. What does it mean to be captivated by God? Captivate means to attract and hold the interest and attention of someone. Does God attract and, and hold the interest and your attention? You know, th that is something that has to be cultivated because we can easily, things easily captivate us or another word is called allure. And I, did, I didn't know that word, the allure of something uh, when I think about, you know, fishing and allure, allure, allure comes from the word allure. And the word allure, um, it, it is, 
uh, it attracts us to something. So that's the same thing with captivate. So you're either allured by self or you're allured by God. Yeah. We're naturally allured and we're naturally captivated by self-interest. Mm. That's our human nature. Um, but cultivating our hearts so that we are captivated by God is what we need to do. Amen? Yeah. We need to be captivated by the creator, not the creation. Everything created should turn our interest, our attention, our amazement, our focus to the creator, to yeah. God. Amen. Amen. So that's captivate. So everything, everything that we see that's created, there are some amazing things that you can look at in the world yeah, and right. that you can be in awe of, that you can just look at and say, wow. But when you say, wow, just know that God did that. Yeah. God did that, right? Even when we're encouraged by each other's talents, even when we're encouraged by each other and by seeing some, some skill that some of us have that's amazing. But guess what? God did that. God gave us those skills. God created us. I am God's creation. You are God's creation. And because we're so amazed at the creation, it points us to the creator. That's where we need to give the glory to. That's where we need to be in awe of. Amen. So uh, I did a Sunday school called Being in Awe of God, and this is kind of reminds me of that. And I want to just read the intro of that Sunday school because it helps bring it, I think, to the same thing as being captivated by God. It helps us understand that. So at the, this, is, this is the intro. At the bottom of every thought, at the bottom of every desire, at the bottom of every choice and decision, at the bottom of every word and action is the awe of something. Everything you do, everything you say, every response um, is connected to awe. We are hardwired for awe, awe, for awe, hardwired for glory. The world around us is filled with awesome things. Every created thing that's awesome is meant to be a finger that points us to God who created all those things. Yeah. The created things were never meant to satisfy your heart. I want to meditate on that for a second. The created things were never meant to satisfy our hearts. Created glory was not meant to be your stopping point, but to direct your attention to our awesome God. Amen. Look at God. So this morning, let's direct our attention to our awesome God. Let's read Psalms 145. Psalms 145. Psalms 145. I will extol you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you. And extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyful, joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all people may know of your mighty acts Amen. and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all the eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. Amen. 
You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and faithful in all he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches all, watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So amen. I want to look at some of those verses a little bit closer, um, just, just to, to pull them out a little bit more. If we focus on, on verse 7, it says, they celebrate your abundant goodness. You know, we're constantly saying God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. And we have to believe that, and not just that God is good, his abundant goodness. God is good in abundance. Our life should be a celebration of God's abundant goodness, enjoying everything God has created and giving him glory for everything. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. All right. And I have a question. In your heart, do you, do you have an awe for God and your life is a celebration of him? Mm. Yeah. Or do you glorify and celebrate self? Mm. Come on now. God. Come on, bro. Folk, uh, focus on verse 10. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people install you. Everything God has created is meant to point a finger back to God. And, and is our fingers pointing back to God and installing him? Amen. Amen. Uh, verse 16. Th- these are questions that I have to ask myself. Questions that we need to ask ourselves. Amen. Because we need to make sure that that's where our heart is. And it's okay if your heart's not there because your heart can get there. That's right. But it all starts by focusing on God, not on ourselves. Focus on verse 16. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Think about that now. Every living thing God provides for. If you just take a minute to think about the things that God's created and the things that he's created with, within that creature to, to be able to provide and take care of and the defense mechanisms, the different things that every crea- creation has, you know, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. But God's the one that provides. Yeah. God's the one that created. God's the one that provides. God provides for our every need and desire. Question, in your heart, do you desire what God has provided for you? Or you desire the forbid, forbidden fruit. Wow. Come on, Tim. Come on now. Verse 20. The Lord watches over all who loves him, but all the wicked he will destroy. Mm. Wickedness is simply replacing God awe with created awe. The Lord watches over all who are in awe of him. Because it says that the Lord watches all who, who love him and are in awe of him. So when we decide to or choose to uh, be more in awe of created things rather than God, that's sin. That's wickedness. And we need to repent from that. Amen? Amen. So the question is, is, in your heart, are you more amazed by God's creations than God himself? Do you have God awe or created awe? Amen. Amen. There's a couple of scriptures that are just fundamental or one in particular, but uh, there's two different um, scriptures that are just fundamental to being a Christian. And that's Luke, Luke 9, 23. Amen. Then he said to them all, who wants to, be, who wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. So self-denial and following Christ is a daily thing that we have to do every day. Yes. And when I said I'm in the battle against self-focus, it's because every day I have to take up my cross. Every day I have to deny myself and I have to make sure that my heart wants to please God and that I'm focused to strive to please God. So that means I have to get up in the morning and I have to get in my word. I have to get up in the morning and I have to pray. I have to do certain things because I know if I don't do those things, my attention is going to be right back on self, just like everyone in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Come on. 
So reading your Bible is not an option if you want to be a Christian. Right. Self-denial is not an option. That's right. We are going to do what we want to do. <laughs> so a lot of times I know we study with people, we talk to people, and sometimes they're just not there. They're going to do, they want to do what they want to do. But the honest thing is that we all are going to do what we want to do. The, the key is to make what we want to do what God wants us to do. Yeah. Amen? Amen. That's the key. Amen. Amen. So, it's not about you. It's all about God. Your family, your job, your marriage, your kids, your role in the body of Christ, your schooling, your calling, your, your, uh, your very life here on earth. None of it is about you. It's all about God. Who are you? Are you a Christian? Are you someone who loves God? Who do you think you are? You know, these are questions I ask myself. Who am I? Who do I think I am? Amen. Amen. Family, what's the goal? Heaven. The goal is heaven. Come on now. Come on. Come on, so if the goal is heaven, the goal must also be to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. This is the greatest commandment. So we're not going to make it to heaven if we don't love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. The other thing is you're not going to want to be in heaven if you don't love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Because all of heaven, the angels, the saints, all creation are, are going to be praising and worshiping God, singing hymns. Daryl, they're going to be singing hymns, brother. <laughs> They're going to be singing to God. They're going to be shouting hallelujah. Let me hear it, Daryl. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. They're going to be praising God. And if you don't love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, you're not even going to want to be in heaven. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. And we can't love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength without loving others. This is important, and this is important for me as I've been studying this out and thinking about it. Um, my mom was an alcoholic, and she, uh, for many years, she was just out there being an alcoholic. And there are times when she tried, she wanted to, she knew she was addicted, she knew uh, that she was drinking all the time and not being there for me and my brother, um, but she was addicted. And there's this thing called Alcoholic Anonymous, AA. My mom, uh, and I remember as a young kid going to these AA meetings with my mom um, and you know, meeting other kids. I think they had an actual um, group for the kids um, called something, I can't remember. Al -Anon. Al Anon. So I think I was part of Al Anon. <laughs> I don't remember all that, but I just remember uh, about her doing that and her getting better. You know, it's kind of like when. When you see someone get healthy again that's been sick, you know, it really feels good to see someone you love that yeah. it starts to get better. Yeah. And I remember that for her to get better, there are some things that she had to do. She had to make amends. That was one thing she had to do. And, and I remember her coming to me and telling me stuff about that. You know, and, and being a young kid, I don't think I really even understood exactly the implications of what she was saying. But my mom came and just bore her heart to me and my brother and to everyone that she felt like she needed to make amends to. And the, one of the biggest things about Alcohol Anonymous is that you help yourself by helping others. One of the biggest things or ways that they can stay sober is because their focus is not on them anymore. Their focus, my mom became a sponsor and sponsored somebody else, and so her focus was no longer all on her, it was on helping other people. That's the same thing for us spiritually. We have to be outwardly focused because we get sick when we start looking at and addicted to self when we start focusing in on our own shortcomings, our own things that go on in our own mind and our own heart. Uh, we, need to, we need to pray about those things, be open about those things, but not stay on those things. We need to be outwardly focused in giving and loving other people. That's the way we're, gonna, um, that's the way we're going to kick the addiction of self-absorption. There is an addiction of self-absorption in, in, this, in this world. Amen? Yeah. 
The other thing, uh, you know, I think about the word narcissist. Um, it's not used a lot, but and, and most people think, uh, oh, I'm not a, nar a narcissist, you know, someone who is so in love or so centered on themselves. But the thing you got to realize about narciss a narcissist is it's kind of like um, autism. Autism is on a spectrum. So is being a narcissist. There are tendencies of self-absorption or self uh, that, that we can have. And, and so calling your, it's kind of like denying, denying it, right? You can't get help, you can't get better, you can't, you can't grow if you don't admit where you need to grow in. Yep. Amen? So we need to see our self-focus, but not focus on ourselves. We're going to focus on and be captivated by God. Amen? Amen. 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 I want to read a, a scripture to you, a, another scripture, so it'll be a little bit more reading. Um, let's turn to uh, Philippians 2, and we'll start in verse 1. So when we focus on God and, and are captivated by God, we have something even better that we can focus on, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. Because God brought his son down here to give us the prime example of what uh, outwardly focus should be and what we should live like. So when we read these words, take these words to heart, and just they shouldn't be words, they should be what we're trying to imitate every day of our lives. Amen? Amen. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from my being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and, and one mind, and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interest of others. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being the very, in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow yes. in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Yes. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. 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 We're not done reading. Uh, <laughs> Verse 14, do everything without grumbling. Before we, before we read that, you, you can't say that you are God-focused or, or captivated by God if we're grumbling and complaining. That can't happen. You won't be grumbling and complaining if you're captivated and in awe of God. There has to be some self in there that's causing that grumbling and complaining. Amen? Verse 12, therefore, my dear... Uh, yeah, 12. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or complaining so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But even if I am beyond, if, I'm sorry, but even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the, on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you, too, should be glad and rejoice with me. Amen. Amen. Amen? There's four things that a heart that is captivated by God, uh, four things that should look, you should be able to see. So when I ask, 
What does a heart captivated by God look like? What does that mean if you're captivated by God? Well, the first thing is you have to be willing to sacrifice. A heart that is, that is captivated by God is willing to sacrifice. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. So if we're praising and captivated and worshiping God, then we're living a living sacrifice to do whatever God calls us to do. Amen. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If we're not renewing our mind. It's not going to transform us. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. The second thing that helps us see that we have a heart captivated by God is that we're submissive and obedient. John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commands. Galatians 6, 25 through 26, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. So we have to be able to um, be submissive. We have to be able to listen. And mainly we need to listen to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Keep in step with the Spirit. The third thing uh, for a heart that's captivated by God, the heart, that heart has godly sorrow and repents quickly. Second Corinthians 7, 10 through 11. Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and it leaves no regret, but worldly sorrow brings death. See what this godly sorrow has produced in you. What earnestness, what eagerness to clear yourself, what indignation, what alarm, what longing, what concern, what readiness to see justice done. At every point, you have proved yourself to be innocent in this matter. If we have a heart captivated by God, then we're going to have that type of heart that is, that is just upset when we sin. Right. It's good to be upset when we sin. That's right, man. Because God is upset when we sin. Come on, man. Amen. And the fourth thing for a heart that is captivated by God is that heart is, that person is content and grateful. Amen. Philippians 4, 11 through 13. I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. If you're looking in from Chapala, todo lo puedo en Cristo que me fortalece. Amen. That is, <laughs> yeah, see. Come on now. Come on. Amen. What I would like to do now is I'm going to read those words, uh, the song that we sung. We're going to go um, verse, five verses. And just, and just uh, pull that out a little bit to make the connection of that song. Amen. There's beauty in my brokenness. The reason brokenness is beautiful is because of how God can use it in our lives. It is something that can draw us near to him. Brokenness can make room for a contrite heart and repentance to bring you back into close fellowship with him. Love and humility breaks pride and a callous heart. It is a beautiful thing to have a soft heart. A hard heart does not make it about God. Psalm 52, I'm sorry, 51, 17. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, God, you will not despise. That was Psalm 51, 17. Psalm 51, 10 through 12. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. I've got true love instead of pain. If you want true love, you have to go to the source of true love and keep your eyes fixed on that love. Amen? Keep your eyes fixed on that love. That love, the true unconditional love, is what saves us. We will never find true love by focusing on ourselves, only pain. I've got true love instead of pain. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. That tells us what true love is. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not envy. 
It is not boast. It is not proud. It is not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Amen. There's freedom, though you've captured me. Freedom is not doing what you want to do or being in control. Freedom is being captivated by love and freed from yourself. Freedom is not independence, but total dependence on God. When we celebrate Fourth of July, <laughs> Independence Day, that's not that. I mean, I, I, I'm not taking anything away from the military. I'm just saying that freedom is dependence on God, not independence. Yes, amen. 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 A heart captivated by God is willing to sacrifice, sub, be submissive and obedient, has godly sorrow and repents quickly and is content with what they have, being grateful and joyful. Freedom is knowing what really matters and rejecting everything that opposes it. Amen. 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 Philippians 3, 7 through 9. Philippians 3, 7 through 9. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing greatness surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I've never been so free caught in your love for me. Being caught up in love, God's heart, God's desires, delivers us from self-focus. Loving God and loving others is the only way to truly be set free. It's the ladder out of the pit of self. So when you find yourself going in a pit (laughs) that all you can do is think about yourself, just know that the ladder to get out of that pit is God. It's it's, it's loving God and loving others. Amen. Amen. Matthew twenty-two thirty-six through 40. Teacher, which is the greatest command in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. This is it. This is. It doesn't have to be so complicated. It doesn't. We just need to surrender. We just need to love God. We just need to be captivated by how awesome he is. And we need to love other people. Amen? Amen. I've never been more secure knowing your heart, Lord. When we are captivated by God, we are confident and secure, believing his promises. Trusting his ways are better than my own, than our own ways. We are convinced that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. You know, on Wednesday, uh, JC did uh, read um, a verse. And when we read that verse, you know, we all kind of took it personally and kind of, um, you know, said that our conviction is what we're not going to allow separate us from the love of God. Okay, so I want to do that same verse, but a little bit differently um, because I'm going to read that verse to us at first. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Those are 10 things right there, right? So what I want to do, because this says that nothing can separate us from God's love. So maybe you, you have been self-focused. Maybe you have been focused um, inwardly or, or struggling with things in your lives. So I want to put some other words in there that may help 
in, in understanding that. Because it does say nothing is going to separate us from other God, from, from our love from God. So I'm not adding words. I'm making implications of what the scripture actually says. For I am convinced that neither the opinion of others nor my own opinion of myself, neither seeking approval nor feeling rejected, neither gaining recognition, neither selfishness or pride, nor any other character flaw will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. And to God be the glory. Amen. 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 Let's give Tim another round of applause. Good evening, family. My name is Sawa Thomas. I'm one of the other deacons that serve here at the River City Christian, Christian Ministry. And brother, you have given us your heart this morning. And I am truly encouraged and inspired. I think that the First, I would say I encourage us to listen to this again because there's a lot. <laughs> he gave us a lot to chew on. And I think I think what I got from it is just. So this is what I said. When you when you know someone. And you know their life. And you know what they struggle with and you know who they are as a person. To see. God's glory shine through those struggles and those things. And I think that's what I walked away with is that we're no different, <laughs> that we truly are family. And I, and, I, and I just love how you really, I could never sing that song differently. You know, just singing that song, it just brought to light, you, you brought that song alive for me. And just in the words and the lyrics and just really understanding how that applies to me. And, and not just singing a song, but how the song applies to me personally. And the last thing I would say is um, when you said, how can you love God and grumble and complain? That, that really hit me because I thought I might not complain outwardly, but if I'm complaining about something my kids did or something at work, and then I turn around and I say, I love God. But God gave me all those things. It's convicting that I have to make sure that I am not, if I say I love, if I say God is everything to me and my life is in God, then I can't be grumbling and complaining, whether it's outwardly or inwardly. So thank you again, brother. Thank you for your message. I appreciate it. Amen. Uh, before Sarah finish up with all the... Um Announcement. I just want to thank the church for all the gifts. Have y'all saw those gifts out there? Thank y'all for taking care of 14 kids in our community. Thank you so much. And, uh, and I want to thank uh, Vanita and Patrice and Dana for just wrapping them and getting them all set up out there. Thank y'all so much for that. You know, um, thank y'all so much for willing to serve and encourage. And, uh, it, it's the little things that goes a million miles. And I pray that what they receive is way beyond what they even asked for. And I appreciate I was laughing with Louisa when we saw it. Louisa said, I never got this growing up. You know? and, uh, but then yet, look what God has blessed you with, Louisa. See, that's what's incredible. You know, uh, yeah, I, I, man, my grandma never gave us a gift. We, we, she didn't think it was 16 of us. Why, why is she going to give all us gifts? You know, uh, we just hugged and smiled and kept it moving. You know, food on the table and a roof over our head. You know, and that's all that matter. You know, and we, we never starve and went hungry. You know, so it's just perspective. You know, and I'm grateful that we can overwhelm some kids. But I pray that Vinita wrote some notes to the family, and 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 I pray they just they think about God for what they have. And I I, I, rec I encourage all of us when you even in your own household. Uh, before you give your kids anything, you make sure you know God provided the funds for what you've given them. You know, so I really appreciate that message, Tim. That everything God's created, we got. You know, it's not about getting awe about what's been created. Be in awe of God. You know, and, I, and I'm very, very grateful for that. And, and I pray that we don't take one another for granted. We don't take what we have for granted. 
you know, uh, that we can come here and worship. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and we worship whether you are here or not. Right. Now, we prefer you being here, but right. it, that doesn't dictate our worship. Right. You know, God does. And if we all have that conviction, we're going to be all right. Yeah. You know, and so thank you, God, for what you've given us. And thank you, God, for those. I, I, I'll be the first to say 14 kids. Woo. All right, here we go. And I was sitting there thinking, if they don't get it, well, I'm going to sure go buy it because we're going to get 14 kids their thing. And I, I'm, I'm grateful I had to buy anything. You know, I bought things. We, we took a kid on, but I didn't have to go buy extra to make sure all the other kids got some. No, we did it. Amen. And that's to God's glory. Amen. Amen. Amen, Amen family. So this week, uh, our midweek, we have uh, Tremai and JC. They've been doing a great job for the yeah. month. This week is uh, Tremai will be bringing the lesson. Uh, Midweek is Wednesday at 7 p.m. at the building, and Tremai will be leading our message for uh, midweek on Wednesday. Um, then this following Sunday, we, it will be our it's Christmas Eve. So we'll have our pastor and elder, uh, Mark Harris, uh, giving us the message. Amen. 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 Our brother is back in the saddle. <laughs> And so this will be a, it's a, it's, um, this will be our Christmas Eve service. So just just come, bring your families, um, just really have a good have a good time. You know, so we want to do that. Eleven o'clock. There's no Sunday school, so there's eleven o'clock for the next two weeks. So for Christmas Eve, there's no Sunday school, and then, then for New Year's Eve, there's no Sunday school also. Now New Year, our New Year's Eve service will be a, a prayer devotional for us. So we'll be praying in the New Year. So church again will start at eleven. And it will Mark, our brother Mark will do the message again for us praying, and we'll we'll be praying in the new year. So we just want to make sure that we use this time to really spend not only spend time with our families, but really uh, be here as a family for one another. Amen. 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 All right, let's all stand, and we're going to close our service out with a prayer. Amen. Why don't you come up and oh. oh, hold on, one more thing. So the gifts are ready to be um, taken to your schools for your kids. Those of you that have kids to take the gifts to, they're all organized in the foyer. The names are on there. And if you need, if you have questions, just ask me and I'll make sure you get, because some kids have two bags. So just find me and I'll help you get the right one. Amen. Let's pray. All right. Let's pray, family. Dear God, thank you so much for just an incredible day you've given us, Father. Father, we are so grateful that we, we, we get to worship you. Father, we're grateful for just all that you do in each one of our lives individually and collectively as a congregation, Father. Father, we're grateful even to be able to give gifts to uh, 14 children in our community, Father. We're yes. so grateful, God, to be able to serve in that way, God. Thank you so much for our brother Tim delivering the message. Uh, just to put on our hearts, God, to keep our focus on you, Father. Thank you so much for our, our, our other brother, Daryl, giving us an amazing Sunday school, yes. God, that we can have and just really know how to encourage one another, Amen. Father. Thank you for the singers, God, and yes. just leading us in songs and preparing our hearts to worship you, God. We are so grateful. God, we are so thankful for all that you do, God. We pray for an incredible week. We pray for an incredible time today, and we just pray for great fellowship and, and to get us all home safely. God, we love you. We thank you. We pray in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Amen.